Thank you for joining us and for being a part of the lacrosse program for FCA and making this meeting in particular a priority. Typically, we have done this at the beginning of our um, training camp, which will be in a few weeks. So to have everybody here this morning to gather to just talk about the summer and beyond, we're really excited. So thanks for making this a priority. I want to give a special thanks to Browncroft Community Church uh, for hosting, yeah, for their generosity and their, their hospitality. And uh, we're thankful for them hosting this this morning. And uh, you'll get to meet a lot of the team today, uh, coaches and staff and people. Uh, one of the p key people, though, that's behind the scenes, I don't know if she's here, Kathy Kohler. Kathy, are you in the... Uh... Kathy, stand up, please. Kathy, just she, she did a great job putting this together, and Kathy's just a very special person. You'll, obviously, you've seen many emails and communication coming through her. She keeps us on task and uh, keeps us going in the right direction, so thanks, Kathy. Uh, the next person I want to introduce is going to, before we get to the meeting portion today, is uh, the senior pastor here at Browncroft Community Church. His name is Rob Catalani. He's going to open us in prayer. Rob is an incredible leader uh, here at this church. He is was very, very excited to host this morning when we first talked about this event a few months ago. And uh, I just have a deep personal appreciation and, and uh, love for this man. And I am excited to, uh, to just introduce him to you, to lead us in prayer, and to uh, start the meeting. So, thank you, Dave. I am a FCA supporter. And but even more, uh, a Dave Park supporter. It's an honor. So glad you guys could be here today. Let's pray. God and Father, I thank you for the families, the coaches, and the student athletes in this room today. Thank you for the hard work of the FCA leaders to create this summer opportunity to participate in these games, to learn and grow, and to build new relationships with others. I pray you would bless both this meeting and all that will take place uh, in the days ahead. May it be a summer to remember uh, for years to come. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, thanks, Rob. Uh, we are... We're really excited about what you're about to hear and the things that we're going to uh, to just share together this morning. There's some great people that are going to come up and share their experiences and their excitement for this program. But I just wanted to say that we hope that at the end of this uh, meeting today that there's a few key messages that just resonate throughout everything that we talk about. Uh, one is that we're thankful for you. Uh, we really want you to hear that. There's a lot of opportunities to be involved in a lot of programs out there, and we know that. And we value families, and we really value that all of you are here and that you're a part of this family with us. So thank you for being here. The next thing that we wanted to just make it very clear, and hopefully this message comes through everything we do today, is that we're committed to excellence both athletically and spiritually. Um, FCA, as you'll learn more even here this morning, we believe that a coach may be the most influential people in the lives of all student athletes or athletes today and students today in America. We, we really firmly believe that. And our mission as FCA is to minister to and through coaches. We have a fantastic coaching staff, uh, as you well know, and we're really, really hopeful that, uh, thankful for them and that you'll get to spend some more time with them today. And then finally, we just wanted to really communicate that this, you're a part of something much bigger than even just what you see here in Rochester. You have your own individual teams and we have this lacrosse club program that has grown uh, very large in recent years, but FCA and what it's doing around the world is really something that we wanted to communicate here and make you guys aware that of, of what that is and that you're a part of that. You share in that with us, and so we're, we're really excited about that this morning. So I get to introduce uh, next the really the leader of this, uh, of this club program and uh, my boss, uh, Sean McNamara. Uh, Sean, what many of you may think that he spends all of his time on lacrosse because of his attention to detail and how uh, incredible this program is. But Sean's title is actually a Northeast Region Vice President for FCA. He actually leads all of FCA in New York and, Eng and New England states. Um, we actually met, uh, I was looking for my next step in, in life, kind of searching career-wise. I was a coach at St. John Fisher College. And I stumbled upon the FCA website as a Christian coach looking for some resources for some athletes. 
And uh, I didn't know people worked for FCA. I had no idea. And I see job opportunities on the left-hand side. And three years ago, I saw Sean's phone number at the bottom of the email or bottom of the, the web page, and I gave him a call. And uh, I just have a deep appreciation for Sean because I was in a place of real doubt. I didn't think that this was necessarily something I could do or was capable of. And as I prayed through it and listened to him more, he gave me a lot of confidence. And he really believed in me to be in a position to be on staff of FCA. And it's uh, given me far beyond anything that I could ever give back. And I'm so very thankful for that. So uh, Sean is... Uh, uh, an incredible leader. Uh, he's been a part of seeing the staff grow in the New England and New York area to 26 staff. You'll get to meet one of our new staff today as, as Sean introduces him. And uh, uh, if, you, if you saw his email inbox and you, you saw that and calculated the amount of time and availability that this man has, it would blow your mind. He is an absolute extraordinary individual and a great leader and somebody that genuinely cares about people, and I'm thankful to be on a team with him. So I'm gonna introduce Sean McNamara to lead us off. All right, well, it's great to uh, be here, and John Wooden, uh, the famous coach of the century for UCLA basketball said, if you can't do it in 90 minutes, it's uh, the coach's fault. So we're gonna stick to on time here. Our goal is to uh, get you out of here in less than that, but uh, we're thankful that, um, that you could be here and, and be a part of this. And, and uh, we have an awesome summer. In my prayer time, I, I like to wake up early, and I was sitting thanking God for the enthusiasm of all of the coaches and athletes that are going to be a part of this. And there was so much energy in my prayer just because it was rooted in the love uh, that I have for uh, the coaches that we have and the families. And we're just, we can't wait. We've been counting the days down uh, at the office like little kids, uh, you know, with Christmas. I used to tear off the days as you count down. And uh, we, we can't wait to get going. And uh, one Im important person I want to introduce to you, somebody that you're going to get to know uh, a little bit better, is uh, we, we've been looking for somebody that could help uh, grow the lacrosse program. And, and uh, I get to introduce to you Solomon and Gretchen Bliss. They're uh, going to come up on stage just so we can recognize them. And, uh, and Solomon is going to be uh, leading things. And, and uh, we, we spent about three years looking for a lacrosse person. Uh, with a background that could help grow things. And we believe that God prepares each of us uh, for different things in life. And uh, God prepared Solomon. And his brother's been on staff with us around three years. And Solomon played uh, at Syracuse University. He played professional lacrosse 10 years in uh, Major League Lacrosse. And then also coached with a good friend of mine, Dave Huntley, with the Hamilton Nationals most recently. And Coach Bliss is a man of deep faith and somebody you're going to enjoy uh, getting to know. And uh, we're excited. July 1st. He'll be on staff with us full time. He's leaving his uh, tenured physical education position uh, and joining our staff. And we're honored to welcome him. So he's just going to come up and share for a moment here. But let's give uh, Solomon a big welcome. My wife, Gretchen, is over here. And she's just uh, too thrilled to come up here. She only, we only have three minutes. So she said, I can't go up there because I'll take 20 talking about it. So uh, there's two people and the natural that I couldn't do this without, and, and Sean's one of them, and obviously Gretchen's the other. So uh, pleased to be here. I've met a bunch of you already, and I've just been impressed with, with FCA and, <clears throat> and, and all of you as, as people, uh, the ones that I've met. And uh, I've had a chance to come out here and have a couple days in the office and, and be to a couple of the practices. and. Uh, as much as I thought about FCA before I really got into it, it's even better now. And, um, you know, as, as Sean said, I'll be uh, leaving teaching, and, and I love teaching, and it's been uh, a, a true passion of mine. And, uh, you know, but when God calls you to do something, you do it. And, and if you don't, you're going to deal with the consequences. And, uh, you know, it's been, a, it's been a blessing. It's been an honor. Um, I can't wait until July 1st. Uh, it's been the longest month of my life, waiting for it to come. Um, so I, I, I'm looking forward to meeting all of you and meeting uh, your sons and, and helping your sons, you know, grow into men in lacrosse and in, uh, <clears throat> and in life. So, um, you know, I just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be here and, and look forward to it. Thank you very much. 
I'm just going to show a brief uh, video here that explains a little bit about uh, FCA's history and all that God did uh, leading up to today through our organization. It'll share with you a little bit more about what we're about. So. And he saw this vision for FCA. And he was bold and courageous enough to reach out to a gentleman named Branch Rickey and asking for a five minute meeting. Turned out that five minutes ended up being five hours. If athletes could endorse automobiles or cigarettes, why couldn't they endorse this thing that was about life? If we are to have a Christian fellowship, you know you could upset America before the next generation is over. You could. You know you could. FCA grew quickly enough, but was it just an idea or was it an idea that would go someplace? Athletes and coaches giving their time, giving their financial support, giving their witness to Christ. There's something more than the playing field. There's something of the field of life and the joy and fellowship and power that God gives. Can FCA sustain this kind of growth? Can it live with its success? And I'm convinced that it's because of the humility, service, sacrifice, just a miraculous thing. Every morning around the globe, thousands of FCA staff and volunteers begin a journey like no other. We are a foot in the door ministry and we help the church get into places where it can't really go. We're constantly trying to stay out front and be on the cutting edge. To me, I don't know of any ministry that has a greater impact on our youth today than FCA. I think it's more important now than it has ever been. <laughs> yeah, it's relevant. Get them when they're in elementary school, middle school, all the way up through the professional and adult level. And so few ministries are able to do that. Never lost sight of their mission never lost sight of the need to draw people to Christ. One vehicle that we have in schools is mention the Word of God. If you look at what you see on TV, all the things, it looks like we're losing. I'm here to say we're not. He has had his hand of, of protection on this ministry. It is for this time. Creating true leadership and coaches. We've really matured into a ministry that's ministering to and through the coach. The unique opportunity the coaches have in the school building is that you're planting seeds every day. In order for them to be the most effective person for Christ with their players, we need to get at their hearts first. FCA is constantly and consistently planting kingdom seeds. As a coach, I can impact my players a lot and in turn bring their players to Christ. So if we can get them to understand really what it means to coach for Christ, we'll see campuses transformed, we'll see athletes transformed, we'll see entire communities transformed. Transforming the campus. There'd be no way to identify the Christians on the public school campus openly if we didn't have the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. FCA gives me the opportunity and other athletes the opportunity to share our faith through sports. They're not the objects of ministry only, they're the ministers that are on the campus. To go into public schools and open God's Word and share our faith in the context of the classroom or the locker room or the gymnasium. I love that. FCA offers over 500 camps in 33 countries worldwide. Over 85,000 coaches and athletes experience both inspiration and perspiration. It's just great to have God on your side when you're playing sports like that. It's just it turns your whole life around. Transforming community. As we establish ministry in community sports, we feel like we're aligning our ministry to not only reach coaches and athletes that compete on the campuses, but also in the communities around the world. We are at a key time as a ministry, as the door has been opened to take what we've learned for 60 years to the nations and serve the world.
it's an impact to the city and at the same time to the churches. And to encourage our athletes an opportunity to serve others through FCA. As God raises up leaders, wherever they are, God's going to bring a revival. I'm a financial guy. I like results. And I don't know of any better place to invest my money in than in Fellowship of Christian Athletes. To see FCA advance across America and now the globe internationally, we are abundantly grateful. We are the ministry today because of the faithful servants who have gone before us. We're going to be the ministry tomorrow because of the seeds we plant today. City and my city would not be the same without the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. FCA, over 60 years of victory in Christ. Um, I went to an FCA camp when I was 16 years old, uh, not knowing what FCA was, and and I've, uh, I've been on staff now almost 16 years and two awesome experiences just in the last year. Um, I was at the 60th anniversary of uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. We were in Estes Park, Colorado, and I don't know if anyone here knows Tom Osborne, but he, uh, he was the head coach for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And uh, I got to hear Coach Osborne speak about FCA's influence right where our first FCA camp took place uh, back, um, way back in our beginning. And it was really powerful because at the end of his message, Coach Osborne said, if anyone was here the first night of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes camp, we're going to ask you to come forward. And eight uh, guys that were, uh, you know, their greatest days of sports were obviously behind them. Uh, they took about four minutes to get from their seats to the stage. But uh, when they got up there, it was, really, it was really powerful. And then a few months later, every three years, we get our whole FCA staff together. We were in San Antonio, and we had people from all over the world. We have 1,200 employees in the U.S., uh, roughly another 50 around the world. And uh, we had people from all over the world together. And David Robinson of the San Antonio Spurs got up and do the opening welcome to thank us for the influence that FCA had upon him. And he shared some awesome stories. So um, from there to uh, if you've ever sat in one of our huddle meetings for the 2024 team, um, there's all kinds of great views of what God's doing, and we're really excited and thankful you could be here. And we want to make sure you understand that we're part of something uh, much bigger than just this lacrosse program as we get things started. So I'm going to go through our introducing our coaching staff, as, uh, and then Coach Nitty is going to come up here in a moment and share a little bit about the expectations of our coaches. But uh, I'm just going to go year by year and just introduce our coaches. Uh, and if they're here, they can stand up uh, when, when we say their name. But for the 2016 team, uh, Pete Cook, uh, Bob Clements, and uh, you, that's not standing up Coach Clements, that's a hand wave, but uh, Rocky Delfino and uh, Rocky Delfino. And a lot of our coaches are uh, in sectionals and um, have full schedules. We appreciate those that can make it out. For 2017, uh, Mike Kelly, Saul Bliss, and Jay Arnold. Okay. 2018, uh, Scott Nitty who will be coming up here in a moment, Dan James, Dave Jones, and Seth Miller. Our 2019-2020 Rochester Navy team, Joe Wilmot, uh, Vince Anderson, uh, Sam Pio, and Derek Bishop. And the 2019-2020 Rochester Orange team, Grant Ferguson, uh, Brian Powell, and Dave Steves. And the 2019-2020, uh, Greg Scott, uh, Kevin Oyer, and Adam Dietz is here, I believe. There you go. 2021-2022 Syracuse. This coaching staff got voted the greatest coaching voices in lacrosse last year. If, if you want to get some great sound bites, you got to go stand behind Scott Barnard, who's here. He'll be speaking a little bit, uh, Austin Andrushak, and then uh, Scott Petrie. 2021 Rochester, John Sierra. Let's coach Sierra. 
London Booker, Austin Castry, and Pat Sheridan. 2022 Rochester is uh, myself and our completely absent assistant coaching staff. All the college guys are still a little busy. Joe Elkaris, uh, Tanner Cousins, and I don't think Matt Kayser's here. But uh, 2023 Navy, Jeff Schwartz is the head coach of that team. Larry Hamilton, Thomas Bailey, and is Ryan Kelly here? Okay. And 2023 Rochester Orange, Tom McMillan is going to be the head coach of that team, Coach McMillan. Keith Keene, Brett Mulvaney, and Tim Copeland. And 2024 Rochester, uh, J.J. Shembry, Mike Cuccitti, uh, Zach Opelia, and Jason Partridge. So that's, the, that's our coaching staff. Let's give them a big hand. And uh, Coach Nitty is going to come up and just share uh, quickly about uh, the expectations uh, for our coaches. So come on up, uh, Coach Nitty. And uh, I met Coach Nitty when he was warming me up as a goalie at MCC in 1995, and we've been friends ever since, and he's one of, the, one of our great coaches and uh, excited to have him on our staff again. Uh, he's been with us many years. We have bios of all of our coaches on our websites if you want to learn more, but thanks so much, Coach. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to start off first by uh, just thanking everyone uh, who's here today. Uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity to be able to stand up and uh, talk in front of the parents that are so committed to the organization. Um, what I'm going to, just a little bit about myself, uh, just very quickly, uh, we've been a part of SC, FCA since 2008. Uh, I've had an older son go through the program, I have a son who's in the program today, and uh, it's really helped to fulfill a gap in our lives. Uh, we had left the U.S. for about eight years, came back, and I couldn't believe what had happened to youth sports. Um, and we wanted to get beyond winning and uh, not just emphasizing the winning, but you know, emphasizing other values as well uh, for our children. So FCA has been uh, integral to, to us personally. So what I'd like to talk about uh, today is the level of commitment uh, that the coaches make um, as being part of the FCA organization uh, because they are critical uh, to the organization. I also want to talk about the, cold, uh, the code of conduct and then I'm gonna wrap up uh, what I think, it, it, what it really, um, I'll wrap up with what, what it is we're really trying to accomplish uh, with the kids uh, at the end of the day, okay? The, uh, the coaches, the coaching position is critical to the success of the FCA community. And notice I didn't just say FCA. When I say community, it's also the parents as well, the parents that are committed, the donors that are committed to the organization. Um, we spend a lot of time trying to, to develop our coaches. Uh, we see them as the foundation uh, to our success. Uh, I think the parents who have been a part of the organization, I think what you've seen over the years is consistency with our coaching staff. Uh, and that's because one of our missions uh, as we develop the, the organization is to make sure we're developing a younger uh, base of coaches as well. Uh, so on the sidelines, you're typically going to see an older coach, you're going to see a couple of younger coaches as well interfacing with the boys. But what we're trying to do is create that sustainable foundation that's critical to the mission and the vision uh, that we're trying to accomplish as, as an FCA organization. And just a, a, a statistic for you, 19 of the 45 coaches that are part of the organization, or part of the coaching staff, have actually played for an FCA team. So it's great to see those kids come back to the organization and participate with it. You'll also see the kids who have participated in the past outside of the Rochester area uh, become very involved with FCA organizations as well. Actually, it was Steve, I was talking with Steve Powell a bit. He was talking about his sons that have been a part of the organization. They're outside the area, but they're contributing uh, to other organizations. So. Uh, so just a bit about the, uh, the code of conduct. Let's talk about what the mission is of the coaches. Uh, our mission as coaches is to positively impact uh, the sporting world uh, through the use of bi biblical-based uh, character, um, 
and uh, uh, character and values uh, as we as we coach the kids. One second. So essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to use lacrosse as, as the foundation, uh, as the environment for us to be able to positive, positively impact the kids. Our goal is to represent Christ uh, as we coach the kids, okay? So for us, it's not just about winning. It's also about uh, improving, uh, improving the kids not just through lacrosse, but helping them uh, develop themselves into young, uh, into young men. Essentially, we've signed up to be role models. Um, we, de we need to demonstrate, uh, the, we demonstrate Christ's values on and off the field. Um, during the games, we, we, the expectation is, is that we're gonna be professional on the field. Uh, when we're outside of the competition, we're going to be very, uh, we're going to represent ourselves professionally um, as well. Um, a book that, um, that actually I'd highly, that many of the coaches have read and actually I'd highly recommend um, that others read the book as well is Season of Life. Uh, it's by Jeffrey Marks. Uh, what the book is about, Jeffrey Marks is actually a ball boy for the Baltimore Colts. Uh, and he ends up writing uh, a book about Joe Ertman, who was a professional football player. And he talks about the challenges that Joe had through his life. And Joe actually is a very inspirational coach. He's had a great impact on youth sports um, as well. And one of the things he talks about is, is we coach the impact that we have on the kids. Um, and the impact we can have on the kids and what it really means to be uh, to develop young men into men. And it's not just about winning, right? What he talks about is the fact, he talks about the relationships that we generate with one another, both as players um, as well as coaches. He talks about the importance of love. And one of the things that we emphasize with our coaches um, and the coaching staff is really our objective at the end of the day is, our job as coaches is to love our players, the objective of the coaches, or the objective of the players, is to love one another. And that's essentially what we're trying to accomplish uh, as coaches. Um, the, from a, uh, a parent-coach relationship standpoint, our commitments are, uh, we're fully committed to parents and the players, both on the field and off the field. Uh, feel free at any time to come up and, uh, and ask us questions. Uh, if you ever have them. Uh, but again, we appreciate your support. Uh, we look forward uh, to the upcoming season and, uh, and working with the kids. Thank you. And uh, I get to introduce London Booker, who's going to come up um, next. And uh, London, someone we got the privilege of watching grow up uh, in our program and, and was a great player at Gates Chilai High School. He's now captain of the lacrosse team. Uh, at Roberts Wesleyan, he's going to talk just a little bit about player expectations and uh, what are the expectations that we look for from our players. So let's give London, uh, we thought he was the most athletic looking person on our coaching staff, so we nominated him, but let's give him a big hand. Well, first I just want to say I'm glad to be able to come up here and talk to you guys today. Like Sean said, I'm a, well, I'm going to be a senior at Roberts Wesleyan College. Um, and today I'm going to talk about player expectations. So basically what it means to have FCA on the front of your jersey. So for all of you players out there that FCA, you guys should know what it stands for and what it means to be able to put that jersey on. Um, give me one quick second. Um, up there you'll see a few slides that talk about performance, attitude, teamwork, safety, and a, and a number of things like that. Well, be able to convey this a lot more during training camp when we have a ton of time to pound in what we feel players should show on and off the field. But um, right now, I just want to talk about key things. Um, when it comes to performance, if you signed up for FCA, you definitely know what FCA is all about. You know that we are higher caliber players and we come out here to play the sport we love and show love for Christ. Um, and the best way to do that is by hustling on the field. If you hustle on the field at all times, 
we'll be fine in the wins and losses column. That, that won't even be a problem and we'll never have to worry about it. Um, another important slide that I found in the player conduct slide is attitude. I coach an inner city lacrosse team and they're it's second, third, and fourth graders and you've never seen a group of students with attitudes like this one. Um, and so it is very pleasing to come here and coach you guys because you guys know what it means to wear that FCA jersey and you come out there and you know, well, I have to be humble and I have to know that I'm not doing this for myself and you know that you have to show self-control. And so that is one thing I truly appreciate when, I, when I'm able to coach all of your children and they're able to show me the same respect that I show them. Um, and one thing that Coach Nitty just, uh, just used to sum up the entirety of how players should, should, how any athlete should be and coach should be. If, and the coaches have one job and it's to love the players and the players have one job and it's to love each other. And if each and every FCA athlete is able to do that, then we should be a phenomenal group of coaches and athletes. Um, lastly, I want to discuss safety with all of your with all of your young men, including the young ones. So training camp is going to be a lot of fun, and they're going to be away from home. I just ask that whenever you guys hurt yourself on the field or off the field, you immediately report it to a coach, someone you know who is older than you, and they can they can help you figure out what's wrong. We can talk to your parents and things like that. If something's going on, don't be afraid to talk to any of us. So hopefully we can build that relationship and things like that should be, should be settled quickly. Um, and hopefully we do not have to worry about this a ton, but inter inappropriate conduct. Um, it's very, very self-explanatory. Um, attitude problems, bad behavior. Um, one thing I will not tolerate and the rest of the coaching staff will not tolerate is throwing of equipment. So for example, I've done it before, I'm not gonna lie, you get a little childish sometimes. You miss a goal and you run off the field and you just decide to throw your stick on the ground. Um, we ask our players to be humble and to have self-control and that's not something we want to show the lacrosse community that come, that come to see our program play. Um, how we conduct ourselves with communicating with the coaching staff and communicating with referees. Um, you always use polite language at all times. This includes parents. If you ever have a question you have to ask a coach or ask a referee, you just use polite language. Uh, for players, we never speak to referees. That's my job and the rest of the coaching staff's job. We will handle that for you. Um, and to sum up consequences, uh, Hopefully we will never have to do this throughout the summer because we come here to have fun, we come here to enjoy ourselves, but there shall be consequences if there are, there are rules in the code of conduct that are not abided by the players. And so we just ask that you, you players and your parents can abide by these rules of conduct and we should have an amazing time this summer. So, thanks for letting me speak. There shall be consequences. I like that line there. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, uh, we, haven't, we haven't had uh, any challenges, and, and um, so we're you know, looking forward to continuing to uh, move forward with that. One thing that we want to emphasize before um, somebody talks about parent expectations, we believe in comparable playing time. And I'll never forget one tournament. Uh, I was watching parents. They had stopwatches, and they were timing uh, every time they're son ran on and off the field and they walked up to me and gave me the amount of time and you know without you know really I was like a little bit blown away and a couple of, one of the kids didn't want to play and one kid was hurt and and um, and so uh, we um, as coaches what we're committed to do is comparable playing time and that is done over the balance of a tournament so if we go to a tournament and uh, we may play one player more than other players based upon what we think is best for the team. 
Um, so it could be that somebody isn't feeling well. It could be that we're trying to play kids in new positions because we're behind or winning by a lot. Uh, but we ask that you'll, you'll give us uh, the opportunity to create comparable playing time over the lifespan of a tournament, uh, but we're not able to commit to having uh, equal playing time because it's uh, almost impossible uh, to do that. And, uh, but that's our commitment is to provide that comparable playing time to everyone, and, and uh, that's important to us, and um, that's our goal. And, and uh, we would want to know in the right way uh, if, if you feel like we're not hitting on that, and uh, we just want to have open lines of communication. And so that's important to us. We get to have uh, Suzanne Lace, who's uh, one of our parents. She has uh, had two sons in the program and is also on our uh, Monroe County FCA board. She serves there, and, and uh, Suzanne's going to come up and share with us a little bit about the parent expectations. So I just want to remind everybody that we are part of an extraordinary organization. Our coaches seek to exemplify and teach excellence in athletics and in spirituality. Our players seek to absorb that excellence in athletics and spirituality. And our parents need to embrace and support the quest for that excellence between coaches, players, and themselves. Hopefully, if we let the coaches do their job, our children will teach us wonderful lessons that they have learned through FCA. So just real briefly, as far as parent expectations, I think one of the reasons that it made the presentation today was we sometimes think that this is all about the kids, but it's not necessarily about the players or the children or the coaches. We have to facilitate the relationship between the players and the coaches. So we just wanted to give a brief outline as to what is most important. Um, I think from what everybody has said today that we need to keep the lines of communication very open between coaches, players, and parents. Um, we have very open door policy. If you as parents are having issues, go to coaches, go to other FCA leadership um, people, and hopefully you can get your issues resolved. Um, <clears throat> if we talk about inappropriate conduct, I think one thing that we need to do as parents in this FCA organization, summed up in the slide probably behind me, is stay above the fray. We don't expect our coaches to be average. We don't expect our players to be average, which means then we can't be average. So if we're listening to the sideline parents from the other team, the opposing team, you know, throw a hissy fit about a specific call, just remember to try to be humble and rise above the fray. What I found is if we as parents rise above the fray, the players will continue to rise above the fray. Most of what is inappropriate conduct is common sense, as evidenced by no foul language, all of that type of behavior. Um, but sometimes you can have a propensity to get sucked in if the opposing team's doing it. So again, just try to differentiate ourselves. Um, and then as far as consequences, I think that's pretty self-explanatory for everybody. If it's not working out for parents in the organization and there are violations of the parental code of conduct, what did Booker say? There will be consequences. Shall. There shall be consequences. So. Um, to wrap everything up, I think the biggest piece that FCA has given to our family is having had a son go through the program for seven years, having another son in the program for five years. The program has taught my husband and I to be better parents just by following what the coaches have taught our sons. So, thank you. Well, we, um we, we appreciate feedback, and last year, um, one of the things that we heard, and uh, th this might be just uh, a little bit disappointing for some of the, uh, some of the boys, um, but unfortunately, our uh, steady diet of fruit roll-ups and cheese puffs, uh, we believe we might need to alter that slightly. Um, and so, um, 
in order to have our sons not only have a great experience eating in the tents in between games, but also when they have to go compete after what they eat. Uh, we received a lot of feedback about trying to improve the nutrition, uh, and, and this is something that is uh, very important. And uh, if you've ever had to manage your uh, son over a long period of time in the heat, you know how important food is and how that can influence them. And so we have an awesome blessing of uh, having Laura Valenti come and share a little bit about what our plan is so that we can make sure that the boys are in position to have as great experience as possible through uh, the nutrition over the, uh, our months together and specifically the tournament. So let's give her a big hand as she comes up. Thank you, I look forward to sharing this and I'll just turn to make sure we're looking at the same thing. So very quickly, just talking about nutrition as it relates to these summer lacrosse tournaments and why we're even bringing this up. So a quick big picture about health and nutrition and what's changing. You can read a few facts up here. Diabetes, uh, most of the children sitting here today were born, give or take a few years around uh, the year 2000. It's been predicted for several years uh, by Centers for Disease Control and others that one out of three of these children sitting here today will become diabetic. And if we ever go to a team sporting event, a summer tournament, it's pretty easy to see why, because you can sh show up there and you'll see a table laden with uh, fruit roll-ups and lots of colored sport drinks full of sugar, um, maybe granola bars, donuts, bagels, juice, um, some cookies, maybe even homemade cookies, a few apples, and that is what they have to live on for eight hours in maybe 80 or 90 degree heat. Um, so we have to look at, like, why is this changing these health stats that I have up here? Well, the fuel has changed greatly with how we feed our bodies. Um, so the big picture about food history, if you look at this, it's changed dramatically from what we ate thousands of years ago. And we have a lot of major corporations producing packaged food. It is really easy. We have busy schedules, so it's so easy to buy and consume a lot of packaged foods. The next slide. Uh, so our children's fuel, the big picture, we have beautiful spiritual fuel that's being provided here with FCA, your church community, your faith, and God. Um, emotional fuel, that is the love, support, and guidance that a family gives to their children. But we're talking here about the physical fuel. So that food or beverage that goes into your child is the only fuel that they have to nourish their cell, which builds their tissue, which builds their organ, which builds their whole body. So their only chance of healing from any injury or growing properly is every morsel of that food or beverage that goes in. That is their only fuel for their whole body. So what we see a lot of today, processed foods are not optimal fuel in any way. They're adulterated in many ways. Uh, they do not sustain our energy. They, uh, sugar in particular is something, if you look at that statistic, four pounds of sugar per person in the year 1900. Today, on average, each person in America consumes 200 pounds of sugar. So if you're not consuming 200 pounds of sugar, and that's the average, that means someone else is getting some more of that share. And that's a huge number, which obviously is fueling the level of diabetes that we're seeing. So some general guidelines, um, every, it will vary for each person, we're bio-individual, but 40% carbs, 30% protein, 30% fat is a good general guideline. Um, and again, I described that table at a summer lacrosse tournament that's very far from that. So what we might see at that normal lacrosse tournament table might be 90% carbs or 80% carbs, 10% uh, protein, 10% fat, but that can no way fuel a person. In fact, a coach shared a story with me at lunch just prior to coming in here. He said how a few years ago he had a lacrosse team, they're in the championship game, he had to leave the 12 o'clock game to go tend to something else. He comes back at 3 for the championship game and his great team. They weren't really able to move, they were very sluggish, lethargic there in the field. He thought, what happened? He learned later that uh, pizza had been brought in by some families had gotten pizzas, fed the boys somewhat near to that game, and the boys really couldn't move for that championship game. 
So what we're doing here, um, I've done a community outreach project. I've created menus over the past several years for some girl uh, lacrosse teams that our daughters have been on. And through a nutritional training program that I'm taking, I've done a community outreach project to take these menus and make them available to any team anywhere in the country that would want to use them. I have all the information available on my website for free. Um, and it's really um, easy. You can just take them, modify as is. So what we are going to do is each team, if there's a parent or two that's willing to be the food coordinator for your team for this summer, if you could just let Kathy Kohler know afterwards, she'll get your information. And then we'll follow up in the next day or two, giving you the information. It's all boilerplate material, how to do this. Um, I have menus already created, but they're fully customizable. And what we encourage is that each team, you as the team coordinator for that, get to choose the menus that you do. So you can gradually transition them maybe from what they were used to for food to heading a little bit more in this better direction. Um, and these menus I've, we've used for the past probably five plus years uh, for our daughters' lacrosse teams. Everybody loved it. It built community because the teams stayed together at the breaks. It saves a lot of money. Parents aren't giving out $5, $5, $5 to every chow hut run that the kid needs to make or that the family needs to make. Um, so it builds community. It's great for the players, great for the team, nourishes the children far better, saves money, easy thing to do. Uh, so with that, anybody who would be interested for your team, again, please see Kathy Kohler, give her your name, and we'll give you all the supporting information you need to help offer better food. Roger, we're going to go to the slide called uh, Tournament Timelines. So I'm just going to talk real quick on a couple things important for tournaments. Uh, we ask that you always arrive 60 minutes to the field that you're going to be participating on with the boys ideally dressed and, and ready to go. Um, 60 minutes before the first game and then every game after that, um, 30 minutes uh, at that spot. And, um, and if you can take responsibility to go to the tournament website instead of texting your coach or um, not taking time to go on the tournament website to find that out, um, that would be really helpful because um, often the, the schedules change and a lot of these uh, tournaments now have apps and websites where they're putting all the information. So if you can help us by taking responsibility 60 minutes before the first game and 30 minutes before every game after that, um, it, it, um, <laughs> it gets mentioned because it um, should have been in the past. It wasn't as obvious to a few people, but remember the tailgates are alcohol free. So uh, we're all about Jesus, but um, our coaches don't wear sandals. And, uh, and we don't drink wine at FCA things yet. So, um, so those are just a couple, uh, couple tidbits. Um, another thing is the uh, conflicts. So if you're going to miss a tournament, there'll be an email sent, and you have to report the absence. And once you report an absence, you can't change your mind because we're going to fill that spot with uh, one of our alternate players. So if you can help us, we know there's conflicts. If there's an injury and you let us know last minute, that's fine, but whatever help you can do, um, there'll be an email coming out from Kathy, and we need your help to get whatever dates for specifically tournaments that you're going to miss passed on to us. If you're going to miss a practice, just email the coach, and then if you're going to miss a tournament, we need you to fill out the, uh, the conflict form. Um, and that's it for that. I'm going to go through all the way up to the, um, to the player's dues, We're kind of flying around here. Um, so a couple things on FCA finances. There's a slide. There we go, uh, where it says financial integrity. So just a little bit about the finances and how it all works. Uh, we're a 501c3 uh, nonprofit. There's very few charities uh, in the United States that receive a four-star rating, and we're one of them. Um, and so uh, we have full transparency on our finances. So if, the, if there's ever a question you have or you want to know how things work, um, you can just reach out to us. We'll handle it on a... Uh, on an individual basis. If you go to the slide called Players' Dues and Values, uh, there's a couple things on here you, that's included in your dues, the training camp, the uniform, the coaches, the practice sessions, um, the tournaments. Uh, we, we're, this year we're gonna have end of the year report cards, so at the end the coaches are gonna write up some information on what your uh, son can, um, can improve upon and what their strengths are, and then just something on our rosters, uh, all but one of our teams are 10 on 10. 
Uh, we have one team that's smaller, the 23 Rochester Orange team, and we typically carry two goalies and 18 to 20 uh, non-goalies. Um, next slide just talks a little bit about where most of the money goes. Training camp, which we'll talk about in a minute, is $250 of the dues. The gear that you get retails around 210 and then if you ever you know, are, are looking to, uh, uh, for more information, you can go to the tournaments because a part of your dues is just 5% of whatever the entrance fee is. That's how we calculate it. Um, the tournaments range from 1,000. We have one tournament that's $5,500 a team. So for that one age group, that's over you know, 200, I think it's uh, around $275 a player just for that one uh, tournament we're in. So that gives you an idea on that. The other thing we wanted to mention is um, in the past, we've taken 10 or 11% of the dues and used that money to uh, fund staff positions so we have the, the people in place uh, to run our program. Since our dues went up significantly, we capped that at $100 per player for this summer. And so that's uh, where most of, uh, that's where part of the money, so if you ever wondered, does FCA take any of the money uh, and profit from the teams? That's where that goes. So there's $100 per player fee, and we use that to hire to help our staff. Um, most of our staff have what's called a home team. Um, so our staff live off of donations, and um, so if you're ever, if you donate to charitable organizations or that's something you're interested in, we all have people who give every month to FCA, and that's how our staff all live off donations. So it's pretty wild. We've had some business people tell us it's a really bad idea, but it was God's. We've been funded through people making donations for all this time. We have some incredible relationships. Jeremy Sieverts, who is, uh, was voted one of the top three midfielders in Major League Lacrosse, I remember when I sent out my letter saying I want to join staff looking for donations. The first donor was his dad, and he said, my son plays lacrosse. Would you like to have a cheeseburger and go watch my son play uh, sixth grade lacrosse? And I got to watch Jeremy Sieverts, and, and uh, his dad's given $50 a month for all 15 years I've been on staff uh, with Fellowship of Christian Athletes. We have tons of families that partner with us so our staff can go on, so um, continue on serving. Solomon is in the process of raising his support. And so we just wanted to let you know, if you ever, if you ever go to our office and go, wow, that's pretty nice, or you wonder where the money goes, $100 of it uh, is reinvested back into our staff so we have the people in place. And if you're interested in supporting any of our staff monthly, um, you can let us know and we can share with you information on that. It's all tax deductible. Um, so that's a little bit on the finances. As it was said, um, we can share with you as much detail as you'd like. We have a team of people that set the players' dues for us. We tell them what they want to do, and then they come up with the prices, and we'd be happy to share with you how we do that. Uh, training camp is the absolute, for, for me, it's the highlight of the summer. It's uh, roughly 48 hours. It's an awesome time, and uh, when we get feedback from everybody, it usually comes up as being their favorite part of the summer. And uh, Dave Parks has done a great job helping uh, with camp this year, and Dave's going to come up and just talk briefly about the schedule and, and uh, what we're going to be doing at our training camp June 5th to 7th at RIT. Thanks, Sean. So uh, the, as you can see, the, the, the logo and the insignia up there on the, on the PowerPoint uh, our undefeated theme for this year. And so I'll just take a moment on that. Uh, kind of going back to the message of you're a part of something, you know, much larger than what's even in this room and that uh, every FCA camp across the entire world this summer will will use this theme to launch all the messaging and the, um, uh, the focus for the camp. And so we'll get to learn more about that, but it comes this year, our theme of undefeated is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, 57, which reads, but thanks to... Thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and we'll, our, the guys will get to learn more about that as we step into camp. Uh, but basically, the idea is that God's game plan for our lives is undefeated. He's always been undefeated. He's the greatest victory. And because we have him, we are undefeated. And so every single camp across the country will be having that theme. And uh, we were told by our marketing department that orange and, and black are the, the best colors in marketing these days for sports. So I don't know if you have an orange or black team, but we're excited about that. So all the gear will be orange and black this, this year. So as Sean mentioned, we have moved the camp 
to RIT. It's a really, really exciting announcement. I think that came out a few months ago. We've been working on this for over two years uh, to, to move uh, this camp to, we needed a big, we needed more space. Uh, Roberts Wesleyan had been great hosts. Uh, we loved it there and we just really felt that uh, as the club was growing, we needed to have more space. So RIT provides that. We're really excited uh, about the schedule and the things that will take place. We have a former NFL football player and Steve Fitzhugh, who played for the Denver Broncos, will be coming in to be our keynote speaker. Uh, we have one of our um, uh, most one, a worship leader that did a camp for us last summer, his name's Marvin Mumford. You can look him up on, or actually you could follow him on Instagram. He's all over the place on, on that social media outlet. He'll be with us. And uh, people like Jeremy Sieverts, as Sean just mentioned, and then our coaching staff. It's going to be a 48-hour uh, experience. It's going to be really fantastic. I won't go through all the details of the schedule uh, that I'm kind of flipping through here as, you, as you're seeing, but we will come in and ch uh, check in. We'll be uh, at the Policini Ice Rink. Uh, we will get the ice out of there for us as we check in, uh, but that will be our check-in and check-out point uh, and welcoming all of you there, and we'll have 48 awesome hours with the guys uh, just really uh, diving into God's Word and also having some great time of bonding and, and playing and uh, um, you know getting to improve our skills as we head into the summer. So um, that's all I had for, for camp. Very excited about it. Again, if you have any questions about the schedule, if there's anything that comes up, uh, we have a number of people that have uh, volunteered, to, wanted to volunteer for camp. We put out some information about that as well. Uh, we're really excited uh, about this experience. It's going to be an awesome one. So, training <clears throat> training camp's the best. Um, we're going to have a we're going to have a blast. I uh, can't wait. Uh, some of you guys are going to get to experience um, something known as a uh, twin bed uh, wrapped in uh, plastic. And uh, but we're gonna it's gonna be awesome. I can't wait for dorm life and all the fun we're gonna have. It's so much fun. The coaches were actually that some of them don't know this yet. We're actually getting there Thursday night uh, for those that can be there. But uh, we can't wait. Uh, Kevin Buchanan, who plays uh, was on the U.S. national team, plays for the Boston Cannons and the New England Black Wolves. He grew up in FCA. Uh, was on a high school team that I uh, was helped uh, coach, and he's gonna be coming. Uh, Dave Huntley, who's uh, the only person in the U.S. and Canadian uh, National Lacrosse Hall of Fames and was the GM who put together Team Canada's gold medal winning team from this summer. He's coming in to do shooting instruction on Sunday. Um, and we're just going to have an awesome time. We have a couple additional camps that, uh, that we wanted to just briefly share about. We have our backyard lacrosse program that's uh, at Roberts Wesley and it's six two-hour sessions where we do uh, lacrosse instruction and fun scrimmages. We have our traditional instructional camp uh, July 28th to the 30th uh, at Roberts Wesley. And then we also have uh, for advanced players an offense defense camp where Solomon will be working with the defensemen and Jeremy Sieverts uh, from the Denver Outlaws will be coming in to work with the offensive players. So you'll get more information on those. Um, so we're, we're winding it down here. Coach Barnard is going to uh, come up in a moment. Uh, but for me, um, I'm just so excited about this experience, and, and I, God continues to teach me through sports, and I, I was at a uh, lacrosse game just on Thursday, and it was a, it was a funny moment for me. Um, I, I'm helping coach uh, at McQuaid and back helping high school for the first time, and so my parents come to the games, which is you know kind of funny. I kind of chuckle at it, um, and uh, not too many people who are the assistant coach who only does the goalies have... Uh, their parents in the stands cheering, which I appreciate. And, and um, so we win, you know, it's a big win and everyone's excited and they like cut the lights. And uh, so everyone's standing around kind of having a moment and they cut the lights and it gets all dark. And, um, and, and through all the noise, I heard, that, I heard my dad, it was so funny, as, as I was walking away, he goes, that's my son, you know, and, uh, and I... I don't know if anyone other than my mom, you know, heard them. And, um, and, and for me, um, you know, there's a lot of things that you want to, that you want to hear in life, but I don't know if you can get old, if, if it gets old hearing your parents tell you that, that they love you. And, uh, and, and it, it was really special to me because, you know, we don't have an endless amount of time uh, for these opportunities. And my hope as I talk to you as parents and players is that, 
you'll steward, that you'll be a steward of the time and the hours that God gives you this summer uh, to come together and to grow closer, not only with your son, but as a family, and that you'll um, not only grow in your faith, but grow closer as a family. And uh, there's one of my favorite scriptures uh, happens two times where Jesus is walking the earth and God the Father at Jesus' baptism at another point in his life. God says to, uh, to Jesus, he says, this is my son, in him I'm well pleased. And, and um, I hope that your son, as he's a part of our program, senses the love that, that you have for him as parents and that our coaches have for him. And bigger than that, I hope that as players, coaches, and parents, that you can sense God's love and pleasure that he has for you uh, in a personal way. And uh, our goal, I was thinking about this all the time and hours we put into this, and it is so worth it uh, to see people like London and other people that have sat as players uh, grow in their faith. And I just encourage you to, to not only um, grow in your love as a family as you go through this, but to consider opening your heart and seeking out what it means to grow in your faith uh, through this all. And, there's so, uh, so many questions that I still have about my Christian faith that I have to go to people and ask and go to Scripture and learn more. So I just encourage you to steward the moment and the opportunity that you have to, to really ask questions and, and to grow deeper. And uh, I get to introduce my good friend, uh, Coach Barnard. Uh, I think there's one announcement that there's some food uh, on the way out that you can take with you. Coach Barnard's going to come up and close us. We're also going to take this down. If you want to get a family picture... Uh, with the background behind you. We'd love to do that for you before you leave. And um, Kathy's going to figure out how to do that like she's figured everything else out up until this point. But um, Coach Barner and I, we played on an FCA team in 1995. Um, so before there was a helmet company called Cascade that had lacrosse helmets. But uh, Coach Barnard, I, I, I hope someday you get a glimpse of the, the friendship and the love that our coaches have. We played together on an FCA team in 1995. He was a great player at, at Herkimer and then at Delaware. He's the head coach uh, at Hamilton College. And, and we have FCA groups, and he also sponsors the FCA group that meets at Hamilton College. And he's one of our top coaches. We had a blast. We ordered Dinosaur Barbecue and got all 30 coaches in a small room fed them well and had a massive dry erase board and coach Barnard got on the crease board and all of us started taking notes he's one of our most knowledgeable coaches but is a great brother in his faith as he's real strong in his walk with the Lord and I asked coach Barnard to come up and just share a few closing thoughts and to close us out in prayer so let's give him a big hand um, you actually said half my speech today uh, we talked about I was going to open up and say that we had played together you know back in 1995 and what an amazing experience that was for me and how it kind of shaped my life. Um, great story that you had your mom there. Recently looked up, we had a big game about three weeks ago on a league opponent and you know I'm going through things and sure enough don't I look up, there's my 95 year old grandmother. <laughs> awesome. You know my, my dad doesn't miss a game either so pretty neat. But uh, I just want to take a couple of minutes before I even begin and um, just say thank you to Sean and the whole FCA staff. Uh, the amount of time and the energy, the thoughtfulness, I mean, going into nutrition, going into expectations and laying these things out for, for us as parents and for your players and the love that, and support that you guys put into this program is, um, in my mind, is, is nothing short of amazing. So I just want to give you guys a round of applause real quick. Thank you. Uh, I was driving down the road the other day, and I was in between um, going from one game to another game, and my assistant looked down at my emails, and he was going through. He's like, uh, you're supposed to be in Rochester on Sunday, and um, yeah, I got a couple of minutes to talk about parent roles and things, and I went. So I called Sean right away, and I was like, oh, that's right. And a um, couple of things, I, that was about a week ago, and I'd been really doing some thinking on, you know, what is the role of, of parents, what are the role of players, and uh, and how does FCA impact our lives? And um, one scripture just kept coming back to me. And I don't want to give you my opinion. I want to give you God's opinion. Uh, one of the things that really stood out to me was Proverbs 3, verses 5. It said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. Think about him in all your ways and he will guide you on the right path. Um, I want you to just think about that for a couple minutes as I continue my talk. But one of the things I want to talk about is parent roles. Um, 
You know, I thought it was pretty amazing today that the pastor, you know, was in our sermon today was talking about roles. What are the roles of the players? What are the roles of the coaches? What are the roles of us as parents? Okay. Um, a couple of things that I mapped out. You guys said all great things today. You brought up the season of life, the book. Uh, you brought up uh, John Wooden. Okay, some of the things that I also had laid out here. But uh, what is the role? Let, let me just go through this in my mind. Uh, as a coach, as a father, uh, as a past player, what is the role of your son or daughter in this program, and, or any program for that matter? Um, John Wooden made the pyramid of success. The cornerstone of that pyramid is enthusiasm. In my mind, okay, nothing great is ever accomplished without enthusiasm. Enthusiasm goes a long ways. Uh, so I just say that's one of the number one things that, you know, you can encourage your son or daughter to bring to the table. Okay, if they're having fun and they're enthusiastic, we're going to go a long ways. Uh, and then also being coachable and having a great attitude. Okay, those types of things, those are also things that what? That we can control. There's a lot of things in life that we can control. There's a lot of things in life we can't control. And I try to really enforce our young men to, to, to take ownership of the things that we can. Okay, uh, my team, personally, we use a motto called paint, passion. Attitude, integrity, noteworthy, and team. Passion, if you have passion, you like doing the extra work. It's not a job to you, you do it because you love it. Okay, integrity, on and off the field. We talk about that. I spend a couple hours a day with my players. What are they doing when I'm not around? Okay, I must be nuts. I put my lives in the hands of 18 to 22 year old young men. Um, noteworth, uh, noteworthy. Okay, what's it mean to be noteworthy? Okay. Uh, take your eyes off yourself just for a minute, okay? And think about somebody else and, and what can we do that's noteworthy and team and team first always in my mind. So that's kind of the role of the, of the player. Uh, the role of the coach. If you were to actually look up in the dictionary Webster, Webster defines it very simply. Coaching equals teaching, okay? What are we teaching? We're teaching skills. We're teaching clears. We're teaching rides. We're teaching man-ups. We're teaching offenses. We're teaching defenses. Uh, our goal is to teach, okay? Our goal also is to motivate and encourage your son or daughter to get the most out of them. All right, but please keep this in mind. This is one of the things, if I could get something across today, is to challenge. Your son or daughter will not grow if they are not challenged. If they're here and they're not challenged, they're not growing. We all know, think of any great person in their life, they had to overcome obstacles, and they had to overcome challenges, and they had to learn how to persevere, and they had to learn how to navigate certain things, and they, had, and they were challenged, and that's, in my mind, when you grow. You grow as a player. If you're not challenged, you're not growing. Life is not about the problems you have, but how you respond to them. Okay? Um, I thought it was really interesting also in the message today I heard, we're teaching our children faith. We're teaching them about God, we're teaching them about Jesus, we're teaching them about faith. But are we letting those roots dig into the soil? How do they dig into the soil? If everything is calm, and everything's safe, and everything's taken care of for you, and you don't have any problems, are you, is that tree really grabbing some deep roots? Okay? Um, that kind of digs me into the parent role. One of my players, one of my friends, that I coach with, coach with a long time. He's not an FCA guy, but boy, does he have some great principles in his life that he deals with, you know, with his program. They're very successful, one of the most successful programs in the state, and his players feel a lot of pressure. Almost every one of his kids is going on to Division I this year. Uh, he's got kids that are committed in their sophomore and junior years, and he, actually even a freshman this year. Um, well, with that comes a lot of pressure, right? So we actually took a picture, because I think he was trying to make a, a statement for a lot of the other parents and people and everything else, and it was his mom, and her son was, in, and she was hugging her son, and her son was in tears, and she was just, she was just, she was giving him a lot of love. She wasn't speaking to him, her face was in his neck. And you could see the young boy was kind of, you know, really choked up. And he really just said, you know, this was his, in his mind, what the role of a parent was. 
And what is that? To support your child with love. Um, so if I were to say a couple of things, um, you know, how do we as parents navigate this? And I think in my mind sometimes they did a study. Listen to this study. This is pretty interesting. They took, this study took all in account the youth. Youth sports is probably a little bit crazy these days, right? You can all imagine that. Um, youth sports in my, my era was the streets were out of bounds. There weren't really any parents. If there a car came, you're like, game off. <laughs> car goes by, game on, right? Down the streets we went and you slipped on some gravel and the whole thing and you came back a little bit bloody and that was pretty neat. Okay, youth sports today is very organized and uh, so a couple of lessons uh, in my mind. So this study talked about boys, young men, and they said, what is, what is some of the, the greatest moments that you have in youth sports? What are some of the toughest? They asked them all these questions. Basically, they said, what was the hardest thing that you had to endure in all of your youth sports going all the way through? You're going to be amazed at this. The number one answer was the ride home with mom and dad. Think about that. Johnny, why'd you miss that pass? How come you didn't cut backside? What are you thinking? You don't know the O? Right? Stay in front of them. Get your stick on them. Ba, 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 ba. Right? Um, so a lot of that can happen. And what was the, who was the greatest supporter in all of youth sports? Who was the greatest support for them all the way up through? Who was the greatest person that they gravitated to um, as they went through their experience in youth sports? Over 90 some odd percent of them said grandma or grandpa. Think about that. You think grandma and grandpa even know the game on the cross? You think they care who scored a goal? And if you let one in, they have no idea, okay? But what do they do? They just love you up. They don't care if you won the game. They don't care if you lost the game. It doesn't matter, okay? Um, so that, that kind of brings me to, you know, in my mind, what is, what is the one thing that we can do? And that's love our sons and daughters. Um, I just want to go to a couple of things. Page 1309 real quick. I have these bookmarked for us. Sean, you said five minutes. This is going to be like another 20. I'm kidding. I got about two minutes left, okay? Uh, the rewards of winning, a winning record can be taken away in one bad year, one bad game. True success, a close relationship with God through Jesus. That can never be taken away from you. Okay, we're all successful if we're in Christ. Um, one of the things that, uh, that you guys have accessible to you is what can we continue to teach our sons and daughters, the competitor creed, uh, and the model that FCA brings. Um, one last thing I just wanted to give you, uh, something I thought was, was pretty interesting. It was, so when we grew up as parents, right, Michael Jordan, greatest ever, awesome, right? Okay. Uh, basketball player and Nike did, that's how Nike got famous, right? Be like Mike. I just got one last closing word for you. Be like grandma, okay? <laughs> just love them up, encourage them, support them. You have coaches that put a lot of time and effort and energy into this. You can't solve every problem for them. And I gotta tell you, if they're not challenged, they're not growing. If they come off the field and they lost the game, we're not blaming the refs. We're not saying that's okay, you should have won the game. You lost, and that's okay, and you better learn how to deal with that. That's part of sports. It's part of growing up. Why did you get married? Why did you get a job? Jeez. You know? Isn't this what sports tries to teach us, right? To give you some skills that are going to last a lifetime. Be like Grandma. Let's close in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing all of us here together today. Thank you for the vision of FCA over 60 years ago. Thank you for bringing people together today, Lord, and thank you for the vision that you have given us. Thank you for your model. Thank you for Jesus dying on the cross for us, Lord. Please empower us all to go out this year and continue to support each other. Please, Lord, help us to love and to serve through this organization of FCA. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.